Hey everybody, welcome back to my studio and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I wanna address something that I've heard for years and I see it constantly online. I hear photographers when I'm at different meetings throwing it out there and most of the time it's used in quite a well, derogatory way in a way to well, make the person saying it seem superior to the person that they're saying at a boat or two. And it really ticks me off. And what brought this video about is I was listening to an audio podcast the other day and a photographer was talking about this exact same thing. And I thought I was the only one that had the view that I did. And this guy pretty much nailed it. And I thought, it's not just me. So before we get into it, I ask if you're new here, click on the subscribe button down below, click on the like button on the channel, share me with your friends and family, other photographers. I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. And yeah, I'd just greatly appreciate it. So let's get into it. So what's the saying? Well, the saying is jack of all trades, master of none. And like I said, I've heard it for years and not just in photography, but in so many different things. And yes, it may apply. If you have somebody that's a, an accountant and a brain surgeon and a nuclear scientist, and they're trying to do all three things, yeah, may, maybe there's going to be issues there. But when it comes to photography, photography is a lot different. And it really doesn't matter what you're shooting if you have a really good knowledge of your camera, your equipment, and if it comes to people, how to handle pose people. Now, again, I hear it constantly. And here's a couple situations. First situation, somebody put a post up saying, I've been doing weddings for the last couple of years. Weddings are my full-time income. I've been struggling a little bit, not making as much as what I thought I would make. And I'm thinking of branching out into doing families. And of course, somebody has to be smart and put up, well, you know what? Just charge more for your weddings. You know what? Like the saying says, jack of all trades and master of none. You don't want to be doing, and, and they just get slammed. Likewise, nature photographers. I know a number of amazing nature photographers, and they sell their prints. They sell their files for publications. They, they, sell, they do really well. And I've talked to them and they said, you know what? Sales have gone down a bit and with everybody having a camera and stuff, I'm selling a little bit less. I'd like to branch out. And you know what? I have an opportunity to do some work for a company and they have 500 employees and they need headshots done for all the employees for the security card and system and stuff. And they're offering me some good money. Do you think I should do it? And it's like, yeah. If they're offering you good money, if you have the equipment, if you have the experience, if you know what you're doing, do it. Now, in no way, shape, or form am I telling you to go out and do something that you don't have some experience with. Not one bit. And I hear this as well, and this goes to the opposite extreme. Well, just do it. Just charge them a ton of money and just give them whatever. No. If you're going to go and do a wedding and it's your first wedding, get to know what you're doing before you go and do the wedding. If you're a nature photographer and you've never shot a person before, well, photographed a person before, I hope you haven't shot a person, but if you've never photographed a person before, do some tests before you do it because it's different than photographing a landscape. It's different than photographing an animal. If you've done all weddings and you've never done business headshots, get some training experience, figure out what's happening, what the market's looking for. Get that down pat first before you do it. But there's no reason why you can't branch out. Perfect example. In Southern Alberta, we have pretty much May, June, July, August, and maybe September if we're lucky. So half the year we have to do weddings, if we're lucky. And it really doesn't, well, should we say, heat up in the wedding season until July and August. And those are your busiest months. And guess what? July and August, there's only eight weeks that you can really shoot an extraordinary amount of weddings or weddings every weekend or have the potential of booking weddings every weekend for those well, eight weeks, four months, or four weeks in one month, four weeks in the other month. There's just so much that you can do. You just, And when it comes to the off season, you can go out and solicit all the weddings that you want. But if people aren't getting married, 
I'm sorry, you're just not getting the work. When I was doing a lot of weddings, I would get booked up years in advance for June, July, and August. No problem whatsoever. May, it was iffy. September, it was iffy. But there was also years when May was completely dead and September was completely dead. And June only, I had two weddings out of the four weeks. So I expanded into doing other things. I expanded into doing family pictures. Family pictures are a lot like doing weddings because guess what? You're posing people. Guess what? You're using the same light, the same equipment, the same techniques to do that work. So I expanded into doing that. From that, I got people asking me if I would do couple portraits. Sure. Then I got people asking me if I'd do business portraits. I said, sure. Then a local newspaper came to me and says, hey, we need somebody to photograph and help us out on the weekends. Would you consider doing that? Sure. I knew what I was doing. I had shot sports before, so I knew that. I had shot news before just for some fun stuff. I knew what I was doing, so I expanded into that. Guess what? I was a full-time working photographer making all my income from photography with no problem whatsoever. But I was not just doing one thing. And in this day and age, I see so many photographers putting posts out there going, I'm struggling. Yeah, you're struggling because you're only doing one thing. And guess what? So are 50, 60, 70 other people in your area doing the exact same thing. You need to pick up some work from here, some work from there to make yourself a good income. I hear constantly people say, I'm a professional photographer. Well, you may think you're a professional photographer. You may do good quality work and everything. You may have a membership in a photography organization, but if you're still working another job or another two jobs and you're doing photography on the side, are you really a professional photographer or are you somebody that just does photography on the side? Are you a full-time photographer or are you just a part-time photographer? Why are you slamming somebody that's doing different types of photography when you could be out there doing different types of photography and working full-time as a photographer? And again, I see it so often. Nature photographers, constantly, I see people saying, well, why would you want to do weddings? Well, guess what? 4000 bucks for a wedding. You have to do a lot of nature photography. You have to sell a lot of prints to get that 4000 bucks. whereas a $4,000 guarantee next month, it goes a long way to paying bills. So don't let that be something that puts you down. Don't let that be something that you use against other people. Don't let that affect you because guess what? In this day and age, we need to get the money where we can get the money. Now, again, if you didn't hear enough last time, I'm going to say it again. Don't do something that you don't have some experience with. When I did my first wedding, I had shot tons of nature, tons of wildlife, lots of sports, and that's what I wanted to do. I had my dad approach me that he knew these two kids that were getting married. Their parents weren't paying any of the wedding. They were struggling to get some money. He knew them quite well. And he says, could you help them out and do their wedding? Well, I said, no. And he said, oh, you, could, couldn't you just take a couple pictures? It's all they want. Now, this is back in the film days. This isn't when we shot like 6,000 frames and then narrowed it down to 2,000 and then went from there. And yeah, no, this is wedding. So I, I talked to them and they were a really nice couple. And they said, look, we just want a picture of us together. That's all we want. One picture. That's all we want. I said, I'll make a deal. I says, I'll shoot your wedding for a couple hundred bucks, but consider I'm doing it to learn. And they says, great. We don't mind. I shot their wedding. I enjoyed it. They loved their pictures. They told a couple friends. They told a couple friends. And guess what? All of a sudden, the following year, I was booked for a dozen weddings. I told them all. I said, look, I've only shot one wedding. They said, yeah, we saw the pictures. We loved them. And I says, well, here's my price. And they said, hey, we're happy to pay it. From that year, they told more friends. And the next year, I had even more weddings. I thought, well, this is great. I still did my nature and wildlife, but I also did the weddings. From the weddings, I also branched out to do family pictures because the people that I was shooting pictures of for the weddings, their families saw me shooting the pictures, asked if I had a business card, and they would phone me up and ask me to do family pictures. Some of the people that were in the wedding party would phone me up and say, hey, you did so-and-so's wedding. Do you do headshots? Because we need a business headshot. Yeah, sure, I'll do a headshot. Other people phone me up and says, hey, can you go and shoot a product for me for product photography? Sure, I can do that. 
And that's how my photography business grew. I still did nature and wildlife. I still did sports. I got hired by a local newspaper and I covered the weekends for them. I still did all different stuff, but I was doing a ton of stuff to make my money. And I made great money at doing it. I was as busy as I wanted to be, sometimes even busier than I wanted to be. And I was making a ton of money. So if you're looking at becoming a full-time working photographer, bringing in your income from photography, branch out to different areas of photography. Don't be too proud to shoot one thing or another thing, but get the experience, get the knowledge, get the training that you need to be able to do that. So until next time, have a great day. Get out there, take some amazing pictures, shoot what you want, build your business to what you want it built to, and don't let other people try to influence you and put you down. So until next time, talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.